Today I'm gonna tell you how we're going to teach you how to make a fun racing game set in the universe of the popular Nintendo game Mario Kart. Compete with your friends in the fun playing this board game, where the aim is to be the best and get to the finish line before your opponents. In order to do this, as in the famous console game, you have to avoid obstacles and use items to attack other players and defend yourself from them. Now, on today's episode, I'm gonna tell you how. I will tell you how it's done. These are the materials and tools you'll need. Thin cardboard, thick cardboard. What goes to board a cutter? Scissors. A the stick. A silicone gun. Three dice and the templates. The first thing to do is download the templates that we have prepared for you. And that you can find by clicking on the link that we have left in the description. Once you have the templates, cut up the different pieces that make up the circuit. Once you have cut out the pieces that will form your play track, glue them to the thick cardboard sheet. You can use the glue stick to do this. When they are dry and well glued, cut them out with the cutter. And then repeat the procedure with the other parts of the circuit. They should look like this. This is what you need to form the play track where you can compete with your friends. Now we are going to make the playing pieces. For this you will need to cut out the images from the corresponding templates. Once you have cut them out, take a sheet of cardboard that's thin and quite strong. You are going to glue the character cutouts to the cardboard using a glue stick. Once everything is dry and well glued, cut the pieces out with a very sharp cutter with scissors. And here we have all the cutout pieces. Now we are going to paste the same image on the other side of the playing piece. Glue the picture to the back in order to finish the racer. This is how it should look. Once you've glued all the characters together, you need to make the base for the playing pieces. Cut up the bases and then glue them to the thin cardboard. With a glue stick, and then you cut them out with a very sharp cutter, or scissors. This is how they should look. Next, attach the playing pieces to the base. For this, you need to use a little hot silicone. Follow the silicone to the center of the base, and glue the character into position. Do the same with all the others. Once the silicone cools down, the races are ready. Now let's move on to the cards. First of all, cut out the temple pieces. Once cut out, take all the pieces, the show pictures of items, and glue these to achieve white poster board. Afterwards, use scissors to cut out the cards. This is how they should look. Now, to complete the cards, we'll need to glue the question mark cutouts to the other side. When you've done this, you'll have the cards. The circuit and the characters. Apart from all this, you also need three dice for this game. Now that we have everything, let's take a look at the rules of the game. This is a game for two toy players.
The first thing to do to start playing is to set up the circuit. This is the configuration that we have chosen. But thanks to the fact that the circuit is composed of various pieces, you can try different configurations, having more or fewer pieces, or placing them in different positions. Why not try out your own designs, and create game tracks with different levels of difficulty? In the templates, you have all the necessary pieces. Before starting, you need to agree on how many laps are necessary to win, and the race commissioner should be chosen. They will be responsible for keeping a record whose turn it is in the number of laps, so the other players don't lose track. In order to do this, there is a quadrant available in the templates. You can also keep a record with pencil and paper. The commissioner is also the one who shuffles the discarded cards. When the cards in the deck run out, the cards are shuffled at the start of the game and placed in the deck within reach of all players. Those cards that are used, lost, discarded, or exchanged for others should be placed in the discard deck to be guarded by the race commissioner. These should be shuffled again and will be used as a deck to draw from when the first deck is finished. Players can only hold one item card at a time. If a player wants to take another card after passing through an interrogation box, they will have to discard the one they are carrying first, and then take another one from the deck. To decide the position on the starting grid, enter goes first. Each player should roll the die once. The person who rolls the highest score will take first place on the grid, and also move first. The other players should take positions on the grid, according to their score from highest to lowest. In the event of a tie between two or more players, they should roll the dice again to break the tie. Next, let's see what the rules are on how to move the card pieces. The player should roll the dice, and advance as many squares as the score they have rolled. They are forced to advance until all points are used. The movement will always be forward, either in a straight line or diagonally. Except for on the curves, where special rules apply. We will explain these later. Moving sideways is not allowed. If you land on the same square as another opponent, this will be considered a collision. Take your opponent's place on the square, and move your opponent's piece to one of the squares on the sides, depending on where you enter the square. For example, if a player collides with another from behind, coming from the same lane, the colliding player decides which square the opponent should move to, either to the left or to the right. If a player collides from behind, coming diagonally from the right, the opponent should move to the square on the left. If, on the other hand, a player collides coming diagonally from the left, the opponent should move to the square on their right. When an opponent is moved to a space that is already occupied by another player, the latter will also be displaced in the same direction. If a player collides with an opponent who carries a shield or invincibility card, the opponent can use this to protect himself. They will not be displaced when the colliding player wins a turn. The colliding player should move into the space next to their opponent. If the player comes from the right, they should move to the square on the right from the left they should stay on the left, and if a player comes from behind, they can choose the square. Now we are going to explain the different parts of the circuit. Let's start with the curves. There are special rules for curves. Curves are divided into three sections. The inner section is consisting of one lane. The central section, which consists of two lanes. And the outer section, which consists of two more lanes. You are not allowed to change section in the middle of the curve, only when you get to another piece of the curve, or to a straight piece of track. The finish line. This also acts as a checkpoint. To win, you have to cross it. It is not enough just to land on it. Acceleration lanes. By landing on any of the squares that form an acceleration lane, you will be able to move to the end of the lane. It doesn't matter which square you enter the lane from. The question squares. When you pass over or land on one of these squares, you have the option of taking an item card, changing the one you carry for another, but doing nothing and keeping the item you carry. Item cards that are used, changed, or lost, will go to the discard deck. They all slick. Any player who lands on an all slick square must stop moving, and will miss a turn. The check on line. This is where the players must return when they are intercepted by a projectile. If they don't have a shield or invincibility card, the player must always return to the last checkpoint line they have crossed. They should occupy the checkpoint line square, corresponding to the lane where they are when intercepted. If the space is already taken by another player, they can move either to the space on the left or the space on the right. If you fall off the track or into a hole, you can choose which square on the checkpoint line you return to. The stones. These only act as an obstacle on the road and must be avoided. 
jump and hold lines. When passing through these squares, the player will perform a jump. To avoid the hole, the row must end the next red line, or beyond. If the row is insufficient, the player will fall into the hole and return to the checkpoint line. The hole can also be avoided by going around it, on the outside. After stepping on the jump square, you are not allowed to change lanes until you reach the jump square on the other side. For exceptions with chicanes, these are narrowings in the sections of the circuit, where there may be a greater chance of collision. And this is all we need to know about the pieces that make up the circuit. Let's look at the items and see what each one does. The banana. The banana works as a trap and also as a shield. To use it, you must roll to dice. The score you get is how far you can go with the banana. This can be thrown forward or backward, in a straight line or diagonally. The player hit by the banana misses a turn. This can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The triple banana. This also works as a trap and a shield. To use the triple banana, three dice are used with these possible combinations. A roll of three dice. This would be a long range roll. You could also opt for a medium roll plus a short one. You would use two dice for the medium roll and one dice for the short roll. The last option would be three short rolls. You should decide which type of roll is most useful depending on the opponents around you. A triple banana can be thrown forward or backward, straight or diagonally. The player who is hit misses a turn. However, this can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The blooper. This only functions as a trap. When using this card, all players who are ahead of the user miss a turn. This card can't be neutralized using any other. Lightning. This is also a trap. By using this card, all your opponents miss a turn and lose their items. This card can only be neutralized with an invincibility card. Such as the Superstar Bullet Bill. The Perlina Plant. This is a trap. It can only be used forward, either straight or diagonally. The dice should be rolled. The player who is hit misses a turn. The player who rolls should advance half of the score thrown. This card can be neutralized with a shield or an invincibility item. The Green Shell. This card works as a projectile or shield. It launches in a straight line, following your lane, either forward or backward. The dice should be rolled. The player who is hit loses their item and returns to the last checkpoint. This can be neutralized with a shield or an invincibility item. The Triple Green Shell. This also works as a projectile or shield. Three dice are used with these possible combinations. A long roll, a medium roll plus a short roll, or three short rolls, depending on which interests you. Let the triple banana. This can be thrown forward or backward, always in your own lane. The player who is hit loses their item and returns to the checkpoint. This card can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The red shell. The red shell works as a projectile or a shield. It can be launched in any direction and aim at what you want. The dice should be rolled. The player who is hit loses the item he is carrying and returns to the checkpoint. It can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The triple red shell. This works as a projectile or a shield. Three dice are used with these possible combinations. A long roll and a medium roll plus a short roll, or two short rolls. It can be launched in any direction and end at what you want. The player who's hit loses the item and returns to the checkpoint. This card can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The blue shell. This card only works as a projectile. You can hit the player in first place, as well as all those who are in the same lane and are ahead of you. Those who are hit lose their items and return to the checkpoint. This card can be neutralized with the super harm or the invincibility items. Like Willow Bill or the Superstar, the Fire Flower. This is only a projectile. It can be fired in all directions. With three rolls of two dice, the players who are hit lose their items and return to the checkpoint. This card can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The Super Horn. This card acts as a projectile. And it affects everyone who is two squares away from you. The Super Horn can be neutralized with an invincibility item. The Bobbone card. This is a projectile. It shoots forward or backward. In a straight line or diagonally. The dice are used. It is not necessary to use all the points from the roll. When it explodes, it affects everything to squares around it. Including you if you are that close. The players who are hit lose their items and return to the checkpoint.
This card can only be neutralized with an invincibility item. The Boomerang Flower. This is a projectile. Three dice are used to release possible combinations. A long roll of a medium roll plus a short roll. Or three short rolls. It fires in any direction. The player who is hit loses their item. When it turns to the checkpoint, it can be neutralized with a shield or invincibility item. The Mushroom Card. This is a mobility card. If you get it, you roll again with two dice. The Triple Mushroom. This also has a mobility function. If you have it, you can roll again, this time with three dice. The Golden Mushroom. Another mobility card. If you use it, you can roll again three times. The roll should be with two dice. Bullet Bill. This card has a mobility and invincibility functions. Roll the dice three times using two dice. Players who cross your path may be intercepted. They will lose their items and return to the checkpoint. This card can be neutralized with another invincibility item. The Superstar. This also has the function of mobility and invincibility. When you have this card, you can roll three times into dice. Players intercepted on the way lose their items and return to the checkpoint. This card can be neutralized with another invincibility item. And that's all you need to know to play this amazing game that I tell you how it's created for you. If you like the game and want us to make the box and the instructions book, if you like, and leave a comment. So that's it for today's video. I hope you like it and see you next time. The hidden question. A question is hidden in one of the frames of this video. Did you see it? Do you know the answer? If so, leave it in the comments, right in there, followed by a colon, and the answer that you think is correct. Next, it revealed a hidden question from the previous program, which is hidden at 7 minutes 30 seconds, and it is. In which of our videos is Papanello's rock and feature? And the first comment to give the correct answer came from Special Force. Hi, and thanks for participating. And now we leave you with some of the comments that seem most original to us. And for all of you, a joke telling spider. Uh, how are you? Very well, how are you? Thanks for coming, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have come to tell you some jokes that my friends on YouTube told me. The first joke is from my friend Jim Paul, and it goes, One day a wife asks her husband, What did you do with the book How to Live to 100? I put it in the safe at the bank. I was afraid your mother would see it and pick it up to read it. Jim Paul, he obviously loves his mother-in-law as much as I do. My mother-in-law. The following joke comes from Yeni Arias, and it goes like this. The baby centipede is being chased by a bird. The baby comes home and starts screaming, that they are going to eat me. And the dad replies, wait, I'll put my shoes on. But an idiot, by the time he comes out, he will no longer have a child. The next joke comes from my friend Scarlet, here in CBM and reads, Then are you talking to your shoes? Because on the box it says Converse. Well, the child is not going to have a good future. The next one comes from Spanish for Killer Gummy Candy. How are you doing, Robert? Well, I have no money, so I'm selling traffic organs. Though you clearly have no heart. I don't, if you want one, I can get you one on Tuesday. Well, he's at it, why doesn't he bring a brain? With the guy in the previous joke. The next joke comes from my friend Creeper Madness, and it reads, Doctor, I haven't eaten or drunk anything, and I haven't slept for far with me. And the doctor says you're hungry, tired and thirsty. Well, what kind of a doctor is that? I could have told you that, and I didn't go to university. The next one comes from my friend Man Procrafter Goss, and it does. My people are on a motorbike. The police officer stops them and says, Excuse me, you can't have five on the same motorbike. And one says five. But no, we lost Peter. This on a motorbike. Thank goodness they didn't have a bus. The last joke comes from my friend Andre, for 5 five, five, and it goes like this. What did the Sony say to the man? It's nice to eat you. Andre, it's nice to eat all of you on this channel. There are no more jokes, so I'm going to leave you now. But before I go, if you want me to tell your jokes, leave them in the comments or on social media. With the word Tuesday followed by a colon, and then your jokes. If you like the great board game that my boss has made, please give it a like and share. And if you have not yet subscribed to this wonderful channel, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. Well, I won't follow you anymore. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.